Hello and welcome back to my channel. So I'm very excited to bring to you guys yet another Harry Potter haul. Yes, I know it's a bit much, but I have a hoarding problem. <laughs> I absolutely love all things Harry Potter, as you guys can tell from my channel. And this item is just one to add to the amazing collection that I've been blessed enough to amass over the years. This item has just recently come out and I'm sure that many of you are wondering, oh, should I buy it? Should I not buy it? What should I do? And honestly, I'm here to tell you that yes, you need this in your life if you are a true Harry Potter fan. If you are a Potterhead, you will want this. You definitely will. And you're probably saying, what, what, what do I want? You're, you're making such a mystery out of it. Well, it is this book. And I'm holding it backwards. <laughs> it is this book. Oh my gosh. So quick backstory. So I know that there are a lot of illustrated books out there now for the Harry Potter books. You know, I think so far they've done the first three books. There's a lot of, you know, behind the scenes, making of sort of books as well. All those vault series of books that I know one of them goes into the characters and they go into different aspects of the Harry Potter movies. Um, there's Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, the illustrated version out now as well. And all of those are beautiful collectible items. They're gorgeous things to have in your collection. I personally don't actually own any of them. I would hope to one day, but they're pricey. So it's the kind of thing that I'm kind of looking into the investment over, over maybe the subsequent years. But this, when I heard about this book, I just immediately jumped the gun. You can find it on many places, obviously your local bookstores. I purchased it off of Amazon and it recently came. I, I wish I had done an unboxing because my reaction was probably priceless, <laughs> honestly. I was expecting, you know, this to be the book cover. Oh my God, and I'm holding it upside down. <laughs> there we go. So um, I, I was expecting this to be the, the book cover itself. It's gorgeous, you know, kind of metallic uh, writing. And in the background, you have Hogwarts and the grounds of Hogwarts and the Hogwarts Express just at the bottom. But what I wasn't expecting is how heavy this book is. This is a substantial book. This is a very, very significant amount of uh, Harry Potter beautifulness. <laughs> so that was my first reaction was just, oh my God, this is huge. Cause I've seen the other, the illustrated books that are available and a lot of the vault series, I've seen those. And though they are also substantial books, they're not like this level of heft and weight. So that was one of the first signs to me that, you know what, there is some amazingness that's waiting inside of this book. And then I opened it and I have not looked all through it, but I wanted to at least check it out so I could give you an honest right off the bat, is it worth it, is it not worth it, in case you're wondering whether to purchase this book. And I can say to you that if you are a Potterhead, if you are someone that likes Harry Potter, if you're someone that loves Harry Potter like me, then you need this book. You have to add this to your Christmas wish list, to your birthday wish list, to any kind of wish list, because this is beyond magical. This book is basically the artwork and the design and all of that that went into creating the world of Harry Potter. So from the initial concept artwork that drew inspiration from J.K. Rowling's books, there's a lot of artwork that is based on concepts that never even made it onto the film, so that were never truly brought to life because perhaps it was the initial just rough sketches of what they were thinking of filming and then to photography related to the final products as well. So if you're a fan of art, of design, of Harry Potter, of movie filmmaking, of any of those kinds of things, then you will truly cherish this book. I am absolutely enamored by it, as I'm sure you can tell. I think it's glorious. I am so happy that they actually put something like this into one kind of compendium book instead of, you know, releasing it as bits and pieces and making us have to collect all of it over <laughs> a, a number of books. I love that they actually came out with one solid book, one item that really has all of that in it. It, to me, is like 
basically it's like a coffee table book so if you collect coffee table books you'll know what those are like so you'll maybe have one particular designer or one artist and you'll have a huge hefty book that kind of has most of their artwork in it and talks about their artwork so this is more photography or artwork, I should say, less descriptive uh, information. There are small descriptions about many of the images that you're going to see inside, but they're very brief. You don't get a lot of background into the reasoning behind some of the artwork or any of that, which is one piece that I wish, you know, was included if they had more interviews with each of the individuals that was part of the creative process of Harry Potter. I think that would have been the one piece that I find is missing, so my one critique of the book, but honestly you're just gonna want to flip the pages and keep scrolling through it because it is just so beautiful and glorious so okay <laughs> but before i start drooling on the book because it's just so gorgeous i'm going to flip some of the pages for you guys so you can also take a look inside this amazing book the art of harry potter so what I've done is I've sort of flipped the camera so you guys can get a better look at the book and we're going to go through it a little bit. So I'm not going to show you all of the pages, obviously, I mean this is copyrighted material, but I do want to kind of let you guys know if you're interested in purchasing this book, a little bit of what is inside. So first thing is first, this is the gorgeous cover. Um, this is a little bit metallic like I was mentioning, I don't have the best lighting happening here but it is somewhat reflective. Mine was kind of damaged when it came in the mail from Amazon, but if you purchase this in store, maybe you won't have that problem. I also think that, you know, Amazon might not always cause this problem with the shipping, the way that it was in the box just kind of caused mine to get scuffed up, but that's that's okay, I'm, I'm willing to live with it. Um, the outside cover, comes off like that and then you have this gorgeous book as well that just looks like this you can see the binding there that is what the exterior of the book looks like if you don't have the paper cover on the outside one thing to note also is the price so here we have the suggested retail price of the book and it's 75 US dollars and 93 Canadian dollars. That's not the price that it's going for on most uh, places. So Amazon has it for much cheaper um, and I think some other bookstores will probably have it for a different retail price. I'll try to leave some links in the description box so in case you're interested in purchasing it, you have some places where it is available. So when we open up the book, we see here just some very simple black and white, The Art of Harry Potter. And we have the first lovely image. How beautiful is this? It is the portrait of sleeping Dumbledore that we see in his office. Um, I, if I remember correctly, you know, you see this image after he has passed away and Harry is in the office talking to Professor McGonagall and he looks up at just a sleeping Dumbledore who looks as peaceful as can be. Meanwhile, the wizarding world is in a complete mess and disarray after he has passed away. But this image is the first one that you're going to see in the book. Here you also see a gorgeous image of young Harry. This is obviously concept artwork. And we have here the breakdown of the chapters. So this book is broken down into different sections in order to just present all of the beautiful artwork and materials as easily as possible. So first we have the wizarding world where they show you different areas in the wizarding world. So buildings, places that you would recognize. So we have wizards, witches, and muggles, which is basically the design that's gone into how different people look and how different areas of the wizarding world look. Magical creatures, so again, as we're gonna remember from you know, Fantastic Beasts and where to find them, this is the design work that's gone into a lot of the creatures that we've had on display in the wizarding world of Harry Potter. Artifacts are here as well in the book, as well as graphic art of the wizarding world. So this is going to be a lot of the Mina Lima designed items that are going to be in there. And then there's a slight conclusion. We continue on with just a beautiful two page panel. Ooh. With a beautiful two page panel of the Hogwarts grounds as well. 
And then we get into our introduction. So this, as I was mentioning, book doesn't have as much uh, documentation or as much information, written information in it as I personally would have liked. I, I love to read into a lot of the background of what happened in the making of these films and in the creation from book to film, but uh, we have a brief introduction here and it basically lays out a lot of the information about those who were involved in the creative process of bringing the books to life. So we have Stuart Craig, um, where's everybody's names? Um, yes, we have Stuart Craig who's mentioned here and he was the primary designer, production designer that was involved in creating the art, the world of Harry Potter that we ultimately came to see and love in the films. We also have mentioned here of the concept artists, Andrew Williamson, Adam Brockbank, Paul Catling, Rob Bliss, Dermot Power, the graphic designers behind Mina Lima, which are Mirafora Mina. Is that not a wizarding name if I've ever seen one? Uh, Eduardo Lima as well. Uh, creative effects designer Nick Dedman, costume designer Janie Timeim, and Academy Award set uh, Academy Award nominated set decorator, the late and great Stephanie McMillan. So you have here a brief introduction into who was involved in creating the world of Harry Potter and just a slight synopsis of all of that. And then we get into the book itself. So as I said, you know, there's brief descriptions in some sections, but really for the most part, this is what you're going to be getting in this book, which is concept artwork and slight descriptions, as you can see in the corners that just tell you a little bit about the images that you're observing. So whether it's informing that this is Harry Potter, for example, leaving the Dursley's house and Harry Potter and the prisoner of Azkaban um, as he's blown up Aunt Marge, that's like the brief kind of description that you're actually going to be getting when you um, see the images that are in the book. So again, because I don't want to ruin the surprise of what's in the book, if you are thinking of purchasing it, what I'm going to do is just kind of skim through some of the pages. So just at random, I'm going to flip through so you can get an idea, but really just beautiful. So this is like sketched artwork of Hogwarts, which might have a bit of a reflection but you can kind of see there you also are going to get a couple of pages like this one which those i think are the biggest surprise of all so i really don't want to ruin those ones but you open them up and you get full images so this will be one image and then this one as well on the back side you'll have two page image of that but those are one of the biggest surprises i found in the book so i don't want to ruin those for you guys here we have concept artwork for Hagrid's hut that you can see. And you also get to really see the evolution throughout the films. I think one of the big things is that as they were creating the movies, the sets, the designs of places, of people's wardrobes, of many of the items that we grew to love, they also grew <laughs> as the films evolved because the budget grew, the time that they were allotted grew. They just had more ability to evolve a lot of the concepts that they initiated maybe in the very first film. You can see Hogwarts. If you read or have watched any of the documentaries that are behind the, the or that are associated with the films, you'll know that Hogwarts is one of those kinds of sets that really did evolve the most as they were making the films. So it started off with Stuart Craig's original design, which he was, you know, not super happy with, but it worked with the budget and the timing that they were allotted for filming in Hogwarts. And then as the movies progressed and as new features were needed to be added to the, the actual story and to what was required of Hogwarts, Hogwarts itself really evolved. And there's a bit of a magical essence to that too, right? That the Hogwarts grounds would change somehow magically over the years as Harry himself discovers what the grounds have to offer and as the story itself requires of Hogwarts. We can see here beautiful images of Hogsmeade, so from a rough sketch to a more of a painting to get the concept artwork down. Now let's jump ahead. So that's kind of been places. Oh my goodness, here we have gorgeous artwork kind of displaying some of the Death Eaters, as you can see. So Death Eater uh, armor and design work for them. How scary and creepy are these? We can see here creature design work. So here we have images of Hagrid's brother. 
Here we have some artwork as well showing Professor Lupin and the design work that went into creating him when he is in his werewolf stage. Here we have objects. So as well, one of the things that's in this book, like I mentioned, is objects that were designed and created for the wizarding world. Here we have the cabinet, the vanishing cabinet that Draco uh, obviously uses in order to get the Death Eaters into Hogwarts. And here we have the cage with the bird that we know from the movies. Um, Draco grabs one of the birds and uses it to kind of test out the cabinet. So those two items are there. We have gorgeous artwork as well, showing the designs behind the Triwizard Tournament, the Dragon's Egg, and the Triwizard Cup as well. We also have school documents. So these are those Mina Lima designs that I was mentioning. So these are items that would have been part of the background, part of what the props that were being used in the films, but just gorgeous. Here is Harry's actual um, acceptance letter to Hogwarts, as well as his letter showing all of the items that he would be required to purchase. Owl exams, documentation, ancient runes. <laughs> we have here potions bottle labels. If you're a fan of Harry Potter, this is the kind of thing that you're going to just look at and find all the details in all of these items. It's just gorgeous. We have here some printouts of the Daily Prophet as well. Maps. We have a lot of graphic designs here of different um, emblems for the Ministry of Magic, for example, for the Nimbus 2000, for Hogwarts itself. Chudley Canyons for Death Eaters, you know, lots of different emblems that we have throughout the whole Wizarding World. Some posters for the Quidditch World Cup. More emblems, these ones are related to food and candies and different things. Honestly, if you're a brave soul and <laughs> you're willing to buy two of these maybe, one of the things you could obviously do is cut some of the pages and maybe post them because they are artwork in and of themselves. They really are just gorgeous. The print, I feel like because it's kind of dark here today, I don't have the best lighting, but the colors are very vibrant, very beautiful, and you will see this if you have it in your hands. It is just a gorgeous, gorgeous book. So at 363 glorious pages of beautiful Harry Potter artwork, I have to say I highly recommend this book for yourself if you're a Potterhead or anybody in your life that might love Harry Potter. It is just a gorgeous addition. My couple of drawbacks are that there's not as much descriptive information in it as I would have personally preferred. It is kind of heavy and I'll have to find a place to kind of store it in a way that it's not just like hidden away. This is the kind of book that just screams to be picked up and looked through. There is so much gorgeous, beautiful images in here that just I don't know, they, they shouldn't be just hidden away in a book. It is an art piece in and of itself. So if you're willing to kind of shell out the little bit of cash that this is worth, it, it's again, it's, it's a hefty item. It is a true collector's item then it is worth it. You will not be disappointed, at least I don't think you will, I hope you won't, um, but I personally love it and I think that you hopefully will love it as well. I'll leave some information linked down below in case you are interested in purchasing it. And if you are, let me know what you thought once you got it. Did you also love it? Let me know in the comment section and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.